This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Welcome, everyone, to the Chick-fil-A kickoff game from Atlanta, Georgia, where Frank Beamer and the Virginia Tech Hokies are beginning what they hope will be a bounce-back season after a disappointing 7-6 and six record a year ago. But they face a daunting opponent tonight as Nick Saban of the two-time defending national champion Crimson Tide of Alabama start their quest for an historic third consecutive national title. Number one versus number two, LSU and Alabama. That's a fumble, turn it over. Touchdown, Alabama! The BCS champions, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Notre Dame and Alabama will compete for a national championship. It's Amari Cooper into the end zone. It was a prize fight. They call it off. The tide has risen again. Welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. From the sold-out Georgia Dome in Atlanta, the number one team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide, taking on the Virginia Tech Hokies, unranked in the preseason for the first time since 2004. And the Hokies take the field. Seven and six a year ago, ending a string of eight straight seasons of ten wins or more. And now the two-time defending national champion, Crimson Tide of Alabama. Thirteen and one last year for the Tide as they beat Notre Dame to win it all, their third national championship in the last four years. Hello, everybody, and welcome Sean McDonough along with Chris Spielman will be joined in a moment by Shannon Spake. Delighted to have you with us. As you can tell, there is plenty of excitement in the building. They are ready to get this college football season started. And if Alabama could win its third national championship in a row, the tie would make history. No team has done that in this polling era, which began in college football back in 1936. And Chris, you have to like their chances. They're loaded just about everywhere again this season. Yeah, watching the film and you look at them and break them down, they're good at every position. And they're excellent at skill positions with McCarron, Cooper, and Yeldon. But really, what sets them apart? And I was trying to figure it out. So I'm watching the defense yesterday, and Sean, they are the most intelligent defense that I've ever seen on film. They do not make mental mistakes. They're the best coach defense that I've ever watched. Had nine players drafted after last season, three in the first round. But Frank Beamer, the Virginia Tech coach, says this Alabama team is still the best team the Hokies will have played in his 27 years as head coach in Blacksburg. They had a very disappointing year last year. A lot of it fell on a Logan Thomas. He was a Heisman Trophy candidate before last season. Wasn't close in that race at the end, obviously. And well, a lot of it's on his shoulders again. Yeah, he, well, he needed to get some things fixed. And technique-wise, Scott Leffler came in, and he noticed with Logan Thomas, what he was doing with his left foot was basically stepping out of the box. So one thing they do to try to correct that technique is get his shoulders and his feet pointing toward the target. You see that left foot? That's not the target area where he's trying to throw the football. The yellow square is the target area, and for him to be accurate, his shoulders and feet have to be lined up at that target. That's where he should improve this year. Pokies are 20-point underdogs, and that's the first time that's happened since 20 years ago. It's a young team and an injured team, unfortunately. For Virginia Tech, with more on that, here's Shannon Spake. Well, Sean, the injury bug has certainly moved into Blacksburg over the last couple weeks. Eight players on the injured list. Three are done for the year, including uh, running back J.C. Coleman, who will play again, but he did not make the trip here to Atlanta, Georgia, as he's still nursing that high ankle sprain. Now, because of all those injuries, nine true freshmen have found themselves on the depth chart for this game, including starting left tackle Jonathan McLaughlin. He will get his first big-time college experience lining up across from that tough Alabama defense. Now, for A.J. McCarron, he showed up yesterday in Georgia with a walking boot on his right foot. 
It was an ingrown toenail. He had a small procedure. Nick Saban assured me he would have no limitations. Virginia Tech, Alabama, it is a new season, but both of these teams are looking for the days of gold. ESPN's Chick-fil-A kickoff game is presented by Hampton Hotels. Alabama won the toss and deferred, so Virginia Tech will receive the opening kickoff. Cade Foster to kick it away. Senior from South Lake, Texas, who's been their kickoff man for the last three years, blessed with a strong leg. Two of the fastest players on the Virginia Tech team are back deep, Chris Mangus and Dimitri Knowles. And for the Tide and Hokies, this season is underway. Returnable as it comes down to Knowles. Sophomore out of the Bahamas, and he was chopped up short of the 20 by D. Hart. Logan Thomas is the Virginia Tech quarterback big 6'6 six, six, listed at 260 he told us last night he's a little bit under that and one of the challenges this year Chris to be more accurate that 51 percent among the worst in the country Frank Beamer says he got too much of the blame last year they couldn't run the ball so they were constantly in second and ten third and ten and it's hard to complete a high percentage Trey Edmonds is the running back they faked it to him. It's a pitch out to DJ Coles, and he smothered the line of scrimmage. Trying to trick Ha Ha Clinton Dix, one of the best safeties in the country, and it didn't work. One of the things you'll find with this defense of Alabama that it's very disciplined. That's what I was talking about in the open. They do not make mental mistakes, so it's very difficult to try to catch them off guard or out of position. Witness the first play. Alabama defense last year, number one in the nation in scoring defense, gave up. Fewer than 11 points per game. They also led the nation in rushing defense, total defense. Here's one of those second and tens, and the pass through the hands of his intended receiver, D.J. Coles. Third down and 10. The Hokie offense that really struggled last year. Scored 25 points per game. That was 81st in the country. They were in the top 20 in the nation last year when the season began that had to win their last three games to finish with a winning record at seven and six. This is where they've been in trouble last year, the third and long situations. You don't want to be in that too many times against this aggressive defense. Option, Thomas pitched it to D.J. Coles, coming back after missing last year with a knee injury. John Fulton, the corner, the first to stack him up. Along with C.J. Mosley, their leading tackler from a year ago, who opted not to go to the NFL. And that was great news in Tuscaloosa. Not the kind of start the Hokies had hoped for. And A.J. Hughes, the left-footed punter, is on the kick. Because they were so bad on offense last year, he kicked 79 times. Christian Jones back forward, waiting at his own 38-yard line. Line drive kick all the way back to the 29. Jones, a junior, rips and run. Christian Jones. There are no flags. Touchdown Alabama. The first time they've touched the ball, they score.
Cade Foster for the extra point. After a 72-yard punt return for a touchdown by Christian Jones. It was a 55-yard punt. Only a minute and 39 seconds into the season. Alabama. If you can dominate for a minute and 39 seconds, the tide has. Back in Atlanta, Georgia, two-time defending national champion, the Alabama Crimson Tide off to an electrifying start about three and a half hours from their campus in Tuscaloosa. Christian Jones' first career punt return for a touchdown. He brought a kickoff back for a score last year against Ole Miss. Seven nothing, the offense hasn't been on the field yet for Bama. And Cade Foster will kick off for the second time. Again, it's Chris Mangus and Dimitri Knowles back deep. <laughs> Knowles again from the two. And again, he won't reach the 20-yard line. Chased out by Ha Ha Clinton Dix, one of the starting safeties on kickoff coverage. Let's take a look at this return, Sean. Two things stand out. First of all, discipline, not to block in the back or create a penalty or not block behind the runner. The other thing, superior athletic ability. That's what we're seeing. If you go down the roster, especially the skill positions of Alabama, Doug Mus Scott Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator, told Doug Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator, told us explosive, 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 and Christian Jones fell on that list. And they have explosive playmakers everywhere. Virginia Tech needs to find some. Thomas throws quickly. And Clinton dicks up again to smother Dimitri Knowles at the line of scrimmage. Here's a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. They're hoping Edmonds can emerge. They didn't have a running back rush for 500 yards last year. Knowles could be a deep threat. And also Jack Tyler on the defensive side of the ball. Very instinctive. Should make a lot of plays tonight for the Hokies. Four plays from scrimmage. All for no gain for the Hokies. Bunch formation. Thomas who was their leading rusher last year. They at least gained a yard that time before he was pulled down by Ed Stinson. Part of the front three defensively. Senior from Homestead, Florida. One thing off the get-go that we're noticing about the Crimson Tide defense is their ability to gang tackle. That's not a sometimes thing with them. It's an all-the-time thing. Everybody preaches it, but not everybody does it in the game. Put on the film. They do it all day. Kirby Smart is the defensive coordinator. With his sixth year leading to defense. With his seventh year on the staff, movement at the right end of the offensive line. Lawrence Gibson, another well first start. time starter at tackle. 63 offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. Phil Lemagne of the Big Ten, leading the officiating crew in this non conference game. Frank Beamer was concerned about playing this game against this team with two tackles who have never started a game before on offense including a true freshman at left tackle Jonathan McLaughlin first left tackle ever to start any game as a true freshman for Frank Beamer on third and 14 Thomas has his man a big game to DJ Coles. And it would certainly help Virginia Tech if he could have a big year coming back from a knee injury. That's a 34-yard gain. Fulton and Clinton Dix made the tackle. And look at his footwork, Sean. Feet and shoulders are square to the target, so he's able to deliver a strike. And I like what Virginia Tech here going a little hurry up to catch Alabama off guard. From the 47, play action pass. Thomas threw it away. Looking for Juan Perez Means, the tight end who's starting. They're without Ryan Malik, who would have been their starting tight end, not here due to injury. 
But even in some ways, Chris, that's a good sign for Virginia Tech because Frank Beamer said last year when they really struggled on offense, Thomas tried to put more and more on his own shoulders. Reason he threw 16 interceptions, tried to force it in too many times. Yeah, and I think there, Sean, what you're going to see is that's a confidence builder for the big fella number three, Logan Thomas. Very warm inside this dome. It's a warm and humid evening outside. Thomas throwing deep single coverage and pushing and shoving as Knowles was covered by Dion Blue. Blue was a given at one corner. The other corner was a question mark as they tried to replace Dean Milner, drafted by the Jets in the first round. See right there, good footwork and pressure. What I like about Alabama's corners is they'll get up and they play bump and run. They play bump and run. They don't they make sure they get their hands on the receiver to disrupt the timing of the route outstanding coverage well coached should be Nick Saban coaches those guys another third down and ten five man rush and the pass is dropped by Dimitri Knowles hit immediately by Jarek Williams Secondary a question mark for Alabama. But as is the case all over their team, Chris, a lot of talent yeah. just figuring out who's going to play where more than anything else. You know, that's what, what I think it also set Alabama's defense apart over the years is that they're always so strong in the back end. In today's day and age of passing the football all over the place, that's where their strength is on the defensive side. And Christian Jones back for another punt from A.J. Hughes. officials very close to the corner but Hughes didn't quite pin them in deep 53 yard punt it'll come out to the 20 yard line we'll see the Alabama offense for the first time when we come back to the Georgia Dome the 2013 Chick-fil-A kickoff game is presented by Hampton Hotels feel the Hamptonality and in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. Well, Chris would have been here in Atlanta this weekend anyway. Never yes. misses the annual Dragon Con convention and parade. Since 1987, fans of science fiction, fantasy, comic books have been gathering in Atlanta. More than 50,000 people for it. This weekend, the parade was this morning. Yeah, Wonder Twins powers activate. And they were doing that this morning. A.J. McCarron trying to activate his powers as he hands it off to P.J. Yeldon. Sophomore ahead for two. A.J. McCarron trying to lead Alabama to a third straight national championship. How about that touchdown interception ratio? Last year, he threw a single season record 30 touchdown passes for Bama. Only three interceptions. Plays with a little chip on his shoulder, doesn't he, Sean? Mm -hmm. He thinks everybody's counting him out this year. We only have 58 out of 60 first place votes. Said to us the other day, we're out <laughs> to prove all the doubters wrong. Who are the doubters? A.J. McCarron fires right on target. And in bounds, Amari Cooper. His first catch of the season. Good for 18 yards for the sophomore. Yeah, timing is the key. This ball is delivered before Amari's out of his cut. And the thing we talked about with A.J. McCarron, passes of 20 yards or more over 65%, very accurate down the field. A lot of times it's easy because the opponents stack up on the run. That play-action game so effective for Alabama. Old Pokey school. defense crowding the line of scrimmage. The lone back is T.J. Yeldon. And the back shoulder throw did not connect with Cooper, who set the freshman record last year for Alabama. Broke Julio Jones's mark when he caught 59 balls for 1,000 yards. Both are freshmen receiving records at Alabama. He really came out at the end of the year four 100-yard receiving games in their last five. I like about him as a young guy, excellent at running routes. 
That was a good pass right there. That's a rare drop you'll see from Amari Cooper. Second and ten. Flag down. Yelled in the head for about three. High Sean Jarrett, the safety, made the tackle. You know, Sean, the one thing that Bud Foster is going to do is he's always going to bring five. That's pressure. And when you do that, sometimes you're vulnerable in the back end. So I'm looking for Alabama. Offside. Defense. Number 92. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. To take a shot deep down the middle of the field soon, especially right around here in midfield. It's a good place to try it. Second and five, setting up well for it. Saw Bud Foster, the longtime defensive coordinator for the Hokies. And one of the very best in the business. Out of the pistol, yelled him in trouble behind the line of scrimmage. Broke some tackles, delivered a stiff arm, and almost got the first down. Bud Foster told us last night we're not going to be able to tackle him with one man. And they weren't able to. And Kyle Fuller is injured on the play. That would be a huge loss. He got the worst of his collision with the powerfully built Yeldon at 6'2", 218 pounds. Uh, you're right. You can't afford to lose your best cover guy against. And I think he just got the quote-unquote bell rung a little bit. And Bud Foster told us when we tackle T.J. Yeldon, we got to blow his tires. That means come in low. Now, when you do that, you have to make sure you wrap up and not make contact with the crown of your helmet because you will get injured because that's a hard part of the body to hit. Watch here, Sean. This is exactly what they're trying to do. And you see his head get knocked to the side. And to his credit, he's like a... A fighter, he's trying to get up and just got knocked out a little bit. But you want to try to avoid your head on contact and mm. hit the legs or the lower part of the legs with the shoulder pads and wrap those arms. The good news is Fuller is back on his feet. One of four Fuller brothers from Baltimore to play for Frank Beamer. He's been joined on the team this year by his brother Kendall Fuller, who's starting in the secondary alongside Kyle as a true freshman. He's one of the top rated recruits in the history of Virginia Tech football wearing number 11. Right there on your screen. Dalston Fowler has come in to the backfield trying to lead the way for Yeldon who's blown up by Jack Tyler. They're all ACC linebacker. Well, this is what you're going to live with, the pressure. Now, Jack Tyler's hitting it on a snap. And what I love about that, when you see a linebacker not give one for one, that means take on a blocker and just say, I did my job. No, he defeats the blocker and is able to finish the play with a tackle for loss. A loss of four. And the Hokie defense holds. It looks like Virginia Tech is settling in a bit after that stunning start when Christian Jones returned the punt for a touchdown. Frank Beamer and the Hokies made their name over the years largely on Beamer ball the outstanding play of the special teams but in recent years even that has fallen off time out. Earlier today the good folks from Chick-fil-A presented checks of $70,000 to the scholarship funds of each of these schools part of a long history of generosity and promoting Education by Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A kickoff game. The Chick-fil-A Bowl also played in this building. Cody Mandel on the punt. Really burned back deep for Virginia Tech. Very high and a fair catch signaled by Byrne at the 15. Here's Shannon Spake. Well, Sean, when we spoke with Logan Thomas last night, he said he worked on mechanics in the offseason. He has also worked on being a better leader for his guys, and that was completely evident when he was just on the bench. He was very loose. He was smiling. He kept a smile on his face, trying to get the fans into the game. He also walked up and down his line, gave everyone a little bit of love, gave a little extra love to Jonathan McLaughlin. Of course, that's a left tackle, true freshman, but you can really see him leading down here. 
But most of all, he needed to learn how to get in guys' faces. He said he tended to be sensitive himself, didn't feel comfortable getting after some of his teammates. Feels much more comfortable doing that now as a senior. He isn't going to accept another seven and six year. Jay Edmonds straight ahead. The son of Farrell Edmonds, the former Pro Bowl tight end of the National Football League. C.J. Mosley and Vinny Sunseri made the tackle. Seven of their ten plays for no yards. They did have the one big pass play that probably gave everybody on the Virginia Tech sideline a lift with as bad as it had been to that point. straight ahead across the 20 and into Trey the priest one of the inside linebackers in that 3 4 defense for Nick Saban hey Sean I want to go back to the leadership of, of Logan Thomas and yeah it's okay to get in guys face but there's two parts of that in order to get in guys face and have credibility you have to be able to produce on a consistent basis and that's what he needs to do this year and the other thing is when you knock a guy down you better be the first one there to pick him up that's leadership well, he's a very impressive young man he's already graduated did so back in December with a degree in human development working toward another degree in psychology third down and four more than midway through the first quarter seven nothing Bama and it's dropped it's a couple of chances Dimitri Knowles has had to be a playmaker. They had the perfect play on too. They had a bunch formation and a closed wide receiver to the single receiver side. And everybody does crossing routes because they knew Alabama was going to be in man to man. A chance if you want to beat Alabama, you have to convert. That's an easy catch to make. Here's Hughes for the third time already. Christian Jones. Provided the only score of this game if you're just joining us. Minute 39 into the game, a 72 yard punt return for the Alabama touchdown. That's how bad their bowl game was. The Hokies, Russell Athletic Bowl in Atlanta against Rutgers. They won 13 to 10. Hughes, the punter, should have been the MVP. Did a great job punting 11 times. And if another DVD exists of that Delay bowl game, game, it should be destroyed. Offense. Number 27, five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. I made myself watch it. It was the last game Virginia Tech played, and the Hokies didn't even have 200 yards of offense. Somehow managed to win. Anton Exum had a big interception late to set up the score for Frank Beamer. They were without Exum, one of their best defensive backs. They're hoping he'll be back about a month into the season, rehabbing from a knee injury suffered in January in a pickup basketball game. Yeah, it's a tough loss. I hope they don't kick it to Christian right here. Yeah, kick it away from me. Like it a little longer than that, though. Burns runs up to make a fair catch. High and short. The kick by A.J. Hughes, just 33 yards. Festive weekend in Atlanta. All kinds of things going on, including this kickoff game. Aerial coverage of today's game provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they rolled into yours. Goodyear, more driven. That's a festive weekend here in Atlanta. Cheryl Crow performed this afternoon. Centennial Olympic Park. Braves are home this weekend playing the Miami Marlins. NASCAR's in town. They have the Atlanta Motor Speedway a little bit south of here. And Chris's favorite, the Dragon Con Parade. <laughs> Shazam. <laughs> From the 49, a play fake by McCarron. It is he threw and dumped it off incomplete for T.J. Yeldon. Well defended all the way around by Virginia Tech. Tariq Edwards had the tight coverage after Luther Matty had his arms around A.J. McCarron. Oh, nice job by Virginia Tech applying the pressure. They're getting a little bit more comfortable, and they're getting in the face of the Alabama wide receivers. They wanted to go deep like we thought they would, but Virginia Tech's able to match up, and they're playing their safety about 20 yards back, so they definitely have deep help in the middle. Karen 25 and 2 in his career as the starting quarterback. Has as many national championship rings as he has career losses as a starter. Short over the middle. The Andrew White run down in space. Good work by Donovan Riley, who's a backup defender. Kyle Fuller not on the field right now after 
He got the bad end of that collision earlier with T.J. Yeldon. There's Kendall Fuller, his true freshman brother. Tech defense has nine returning starters, Sean, and they knew that was the strength. And playing a team like Alabama early in the season, they got to be able to carry up. Frank Beamer says we have an excellent defense. We have an outstanding quarterback. We have good kickers. That's a very good place to start. Now we need the rest of the team to fill in around those strengths. Third down and eight. Six minutes to go in the quarter. McCarron on the run. Is he in bounds? Yes, for the first down. Kevin Norwood. Kendall Fuller had the coverage. They get 11 on third down and eight. A new aspect to his game. I was talking to some pro scouts early in the work. One thing they wanted to see from A.J. McCarron is this, the ability to throw on the run. His eyes staying downfield. Norwood does a good job of understanding where he is on the field. The thing I loved about it, he caught the ball with his hands and not belly catch. Like Nussmeyer saying, Norwood's a very precise route runner as well. Caught 29 balls last year. Yeldon ahead to the 34. Chris, of course, the big story for Alabama, replacing three outstanding offensive linemen. They had an NFL caliber offensive line last year. But three new starters this year. The returning starters are Anthony Steen, the right guard, and Cyrus Quanjo, the left tackle. How do you think they've fared so far? I think they're doing okay. In the preseason scrimmage a couple weeks ago, they struggled. Coach Saban called them out. And they'll get better as the year goes on and they start playing together. But it should be like fingers in a glove. Ryan Kelly takes over for the great Barrett Jones at center. McCarron on target. Amari Cooper weaving through traffic and down inside the 20. Brandon Faison, another true freshman in that Virginia Tech secondary, made the tackle after a pickup of 15. Okay, they're going to pick on number two right there for Virginia Tech. Donovan Riley with a little bit of a pick. He had Yellen go outside. He rubbed the defender, which cleared Amari Cooper, getting in Donovan Riley's pass to cover and close on Cooper. And again, the ball is on time and on target, which allows Cooper to run after catch. Hokies really could not afford an injury to Kyle Fuller, senior defender, surrounded by youth in that secondary, particularly without Exum, who would be a senior. McCarron, deep corner ball, up for grabs and out of bounds. Cooper looked like he came away with it with Kendall Fuller in good coverage. But by the time he grasped it, he was across the boundary. Now, AJ has no trouble throwing jump balls, especially to Mari Cooper. And look at the true freshman. Kendall Fuller going up and battling Amari Cooper. You see the strong hands on Cooper, even though he was out of bounds and incomplete. Still Crowd getting... saw the same replay we saw. Some of the Bama fans wondering if there might be a replay review by Tom Herbert. Did you say the crowd's about 60-40 Alabama? Neutral game. The tickets were split. It's a little closer to Tuscaloosa. Seems to be a bit more crimson in the building. Agreed. Yeldon. Dancing down to the 10. Tariq Edwards the stop. It'll be third and one. Here's Shannon. Team is saying Kyle Fuller is clear to return. He was just complaining that his helmet kind of came down funny on his head, kind of pushed forward on his face. But Virginia Tech actually has a computer, a wireless system, 12 sensors in each of the helmets that reads the impact of the helmet. So they took a look at that, and they have cleared Kyle Fuller to return to the game. Yeah, you understand that the precautions taken for the protection of the player and especially now the awareness of head injuries you want to make sure he's absolutely ready to come in and healthy third down and one they go up the middle with the Elden bounced it to the right and picked up the first down with a yard and a half to spare Luther Maddie and James Gale made the tackle the front four of that Virginia Tech defense is the strength particularly Gale. They're glad he came back for his senior year and one of the best defensive ends in the ACC. The problem they have is they don't have a lot of depth. Well, Sean, you asked me the question earlier, how's the Alabama offensive line faring right there very well? Third and one, and you can change the line of scrimmage and push the defenders back like they did. That's a win for the big fellows in the Crimson. First and goal, Alabama. Under three and a half to go in the first quarter. They lead seven to nothing. Another play pick by McCarron. All kinds of time. And over the head of Cooper. Give Fuller credit. 
And Frank Beamer and Bud Foster aren't surprised that he's holding his own. There is a flag on the play. You see right in the middle of the field. They talk about look at how many freshmen make an impact all over college football. Why can't Holding. Fuller? 71 offense. 10 yard penalty. Three first down. Cyrus Quanjo. Considered one of the top offensive line prospects in the country. A junior. Already speculation about whether he'll be back for his senior year. He's almost certain to be a first round pick if he comes out at the end of this year. Uh, just going back to Fuller, you know, like an Alabama recruit, he had a lot of those stars by his name. I think he had five of them. I'm not sure Virginia Tech gets a lot of five star guys, but he's one and he's shown it today. He's the most decorated recruit they've ever had. Tyrod Taylor was the last five star recruit they had, the fine quarterback. First and goal now, they're back at the 17. Going to be their first offensive touchdown of the year. Lots of room in the flat. Christian Jones, who scored on the punt return, gets them back to the nine yard line, chopped down by Dietrich Bonner, the safety. Now, this is on defense number 24, you see, for Virginia Tech. Not playing man to man. Tyreek Edwards got lost in a run fake. And anytime you're playing man to man coverage with Jay Ward, you got to disregard any run fakes and stay with your guy as Christian Jones came across. He got lost in the shuffle. Big yardage for Alabama. Second and goal from just inside the nine. He held it up the middle. Jack Tyler stopped him near the two yard line. Sean, last year, yards after contact for Yeldon about 2.6 yards. You see Jack Tyler, who's a good, solid tackler, hitting him low, but the strength of yelled him carried him about 2.6 yards. Per carry. Well, that's yes. average for every time he carried the ball. Yeah. He got over two yards after contact. Backed up Eddie Lacy last year, ran for more than 1,300. Yeldon rushed for 1108, the Alabama freshman record. On balance line right here, they got big Cyrus on the right side as a tight end. On third and goal, Yeldon powers his way into the end zone. This is a dead giveaway. You're going to put your best offensive lineman as a tight end, and eventually the ball carrier will work his way. And you'll see the, the collapse of the Virginia Tech defense led by Cyrus Quanjo right there. Just push double team, keep driving, keep driving, keep driving, and you have a running back with power like Yeldon. Easy play for the Crimson Tide, well executed. Dave Foster adds the extra point. Alabama goes 49 yards, took them five minutes to do it, 11 plays. Capped by the run by Yeldon, it's 14-0. Dave Foster kicks off for Alabama. Down to Dimitri Knowles. Starting at the nine. For the first time on a kickoff return tonight, he made it across the 20-yard line. Landon Collins, the tackle. Here's Reese Davis in the studio. Sean, time for the Taco Bell Live Moss moment. Brett Bielema making his debut as the head coach at Arkansas, taking on Louisiana, that is Louisiana Lafayette. Brandon Allen finding Piero Small as 27-7 Razorbacks. For a good start. Not an easy opponent to begin for Bielema. Big hole. Trey Edmonds off to the races. They will not catch him. He pulls away and scores. 78 yards for the Hokies.
Vernell adds the extra point. Boy, did Virginia Tech need that. John, watch offensive tackle number 63, Gibson. Remember, a young player. Watch what he does. You want to talk about sustaining blocks, which opens a hole. See, drive that defender all the way across the ball. Then you have number 14, Trey Edmonds, showing great speed. And it starts off with Logan Thomas, too. That was a read option. Logan did a good job of reading where the defense was, saw the hole open up, made the decision to let Edmonds take it. You get a big play, but it started off by the sustained block from Gibson as an offensive tackle, a young guy making a big play for his teammates on the offensive line. First career touchdown, his first college game. He redshirted last year. Worked on his strength and speed. Out of Danville, Virginia. So they score just 16 seconds after the Alabama touchdown. To get back within seven. And they don't usually have to huddle up very often over there after giving up a big play. They don't give up many. Look who's taking charge of the huddle. He signs his name to that defense now. If you're a defensive end, you can't get driven past the ball by an offensive tackle. And that's where the hole was created. Lost his cutback lane. Mitchell Lundgren kicked off for the Hokies. Kevin Norwood started out and then decided the better decision was to down it. Well, Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues tonight. Another terrific matchup here on ESPN. SEC Big 12, number 12, LSU taking on 20th ranked TCU presented by Hampton Hotels tonight at 9 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. And keep an eye, speaking of watching, on the two defensive tackles for Virginia Tech, Hopkins and Maddie. They don't have a lot of depth at that position, and the only problem with scoring was that they maybe scored too fast because those big fellas are over 300 pounds apiece, number 92 and 98, and might need a little rest, but they're tough guys, and they know that their team is counting on them to stay in the ball game and finish. Play clock down to four. They huddled by the sideline and ran right over the ball. A.J. McCarron handed it off. Boston Fowler in trouble and buried back at the 20 by this inspired Virginia Tech defense. Derek Hopkins and Josh Trimble leading the way. Penetration by Daddy Nicholas, and it helps a little bit when you don't get on block. Now he got there a little too excited and came out of control. But one thing Virginia Tech's been known for is pursuit to the football. That's what Bud Foster demands. Fuller's back on the field for the Hokies secondary, and that helps the cause. Second and 15. McCarron pressured more than usual, and he's down for a loss. Back at the 18-yard line, Luther Maddy, junior out of Delray Beach, Florida. He's having his way with some of these new starting offensive linemen for Alabama. Three first time starters on this offensive line Nick Saban said he knows there's going to be some growing pains in the first game there are always some communication mistakes he said we have lost a lot of experience we're replacing them with a lot of talent but they don't have the benefit of experience I'm just impressed with their effort in this day and age of guys taking plays off we're seeing 92 and 98 bringing it every single down and a conservative call on third down and 16. Tip of the cap by the Alabama coaches to this Virginia Tech defense as the handoff went to Fowler, who stopped well short of the first down at the 25-yard line. Virginia Tech right back in the game, and Alabama will punt when we go to the second quarter. Back to ESPN College Football Primetime, the Chick-fil-A kickoff game presented by Hampton Hotels. End of one quarter, top-ranked Alabama leading Virginia Tech 14 to 7. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Shannon Spake on the sideline. Sellout crowd inside the warm Georgia Dome. 
If I'm Frank Beamer, I do not come after this punt. And they did not. Low wobbly kick by Cody Mandel. Nice on Jared. Very deep for that punt. Had no chance to field it. And it's down by C.J. Mosby. Near the 32-yard line. 43-yard punt. Time now for our Discover Game Changer. Brought to you by Discover Car. This was certainly a game changer. It looked like Alabama might run Virginia Tech out of the building. Instead, Jay Edmonds ran 78 yards for a touchdown. Frank Beamer was telling us that he was hoping to see big things from number 14, Trey Edmonds. I know that put a smile on his face. Logan Thomas hands it off to Edmonds. He's ahead to the 35. John Fulton made the tackle, gain of three. Frank Beamer, in talking about Edmonds, said, hey, the last time we played in this game, Played Alabama in the George Dome in 2009. Bama won by 10. So, but in that game, we played a couple of freshmen named Ryan Williams and J. Ron Hosley, who made their presence known immediately. And he was hoping Edmonds, Kendall Fuller, the kind of freshman talent that could do that tonight against this great Alabama team. And so far, they have. Blitz. Thomas is picked off. Vinny Sansuri scores, and Alabama has scored on special teams, offense, and now defense. In the open, we talked about intelligence. That play was the perfect example of the smartest defense in college football. And the kind of mistake Logan Thomas could not afford to make. Cade Foster for the extra point. And it's 21 to 7. Now another play that might be a game changer. Vinny Sunseri. 35-yard interception return for a touchdown. A crusher for Frank Beamer. Everybody at home rooting for Virginia Tech is yelling, come on, Logan. No, it's not Logan. It's right here, number 18, DJ Coles. Now, what you're going to see is DJ Coles will quit on a route. He hears footsteps, and he gets alligator arms. Then you put a smart football player like Sinceri in a robber position, the result is touchdown. That's not on Logan Thomas as he's telling DJ Coles right there, and there's some leadership ability, don't blame him. But I'd get over in that sideline and say, if you ever quit on a route again, I'm never thrown to you again. Yeah, when he talked about he needs to learn to get after some of his teammates, if there was ever a time to get after somebody, that was the time. What an awful effort by DJ Coles. Got shy, a little bit shy going across the middle. Adam Griffith kicks off. First career touchdown by Vinny Sanceri after his third career interception. Dimitri Knowles to the 20, and that's all. Taken down by Reggie Ragland. Here's Reese Davis. Sean, time for Taco Bell live Moss moment, and Oklahoma State is living big time. Jeremy Smith goes in against Mississippi State. J.W. Walsh over 100 yards rushing. The story, Glenn Spencer's defense is throttling the Bulldogs. It's 21-3 in the fourth. Oklahoma State team, many believes the favorite to win the Big 12 this year. Logan Thomas after the play fake. Going deep, and Knowles is behind the defense and can't run under it. They had it, and they didn't connect. Oh, I love the call by Scott Leffler, the offensive coordinator, showing faith and trust in your quarterback. It's a well-thrown ball, but again, when you're playing the number one team in the country, a team that's going for destiny, you've got to be able to convert when you have an opportunity to convert. John Fulton, who's one of those vying to be the regular cornerback opposite Dion Blue. Second and ten, Hokies from their own 21.
Edmond slithers ahead to the 25-yard line. After that disappointing 7-6 and six a year ago, Frank Beamer made some changes on his coaching staff, brought in Scott Leffler with his hand up against his headset there and the pencil in his fingers. He was the offensive coordinator last year at Auburn. He knows how tough this Alabama defense can be. Last year, Auburn had just 163 yards of offense and a 49 to nothing loss against Alabama, one of the most lopsided games in the history of that great rivalry. Third and six, four-man rush, and the pass is low. Tended again for D.J. Coles. Frank Beamer and Scott Lepp were looking for playmakers at wide receivers. So far, they have not been unearthed in this first half. Right, and take a look at Logan Thomas's footwork. Right here, he's not in balance. He's not able to get both feet going to the target or in alignment. And when your feet are not in line with your shoulders toward the target, you're going to get dirt balls, just like that one. Now, he had pressure around him, so his feet got tangled a little bit. A.J. Hughes to punt. Christian Jones has a 72-yard punt return for a touchdown tonight. He is going the wrong way. Down at the 18-yard line, Matt Roth made the tackle. 51-yard punt, loss of six on the run down. The 2013 Chick-fil-A kickoff game. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Adidas Originals. Explore the new roundhouse instinct at adidas.com slash originals. Nick Saban beginning his seventh season as head coach at Alabama. What a tremendous run it has been. 61 and 3 the last five years. Out of the flat, Austin Fowler tackled immediately by Kaishan Jarrett. No gain on the play. Nick says every year is a new year. Just because you've done well in recent years doesn't mean it gets handed off. Every team has to earn it. And he was worried about complacency, but he said he thought a great barometer, Chris, was that when they do their conditioning tests in the fall, when they come back from the summer, this is the best conditioned Alabama team as a group that they've had since he's been there. The best thing about Alabama, they don't compete against other teams. They compete against past Alabama teams. That's what's their motivation. Yeldon stuffed by Tariq Edwards. Well, this Virginia Tech defense has been terrific. It's 21-7, but Alabama has scored a special teams touchdown and a defensive touchdown. Uh, Bud Foster, uh, you talk about coaches that may be a little bit underappreciated. The consistency of the job that he's done over the years is remarkable. And his kids play hard. And again, I'm going to emphasize how well their two inside players are playing, Luther Maddy and Derek Hopkins, and they're not getting much of a break. That's effort, that's toughness. That's what I love to see from college football players. Third down and 12. McCarron, a lot of time, one on one, and broken up by Kyle Fuller. Outstanding defense to swat it away from Christian Jones. Discipline, discipline in coverage, trusting your training, trusting your technique. Keeping the left arm off the body, going with the right arm across the body to knock it away. That's how to play corner, Kyle. Alabama's offense has just 77 yards. Cody Mandel to punt. Senior from Lafayette, Louisiana. Ooh, under duress. No flag thrown. Mandel did go down. They came after him, did not attempt to field a punt. Landon Collins downs it at the 29. Tide fans groaning. They thought there should have been a flag for running into the punter. 55-yard punt under duress. Uh, 
I think it was his own guy, Sean. I think number 29, Maxwell, was the one that clipped him, not a Virginia Tech player. Bill Lamagne is a veteran official. He was right there. He had the best view at it. And he got the right view. There's Logan Thomas. One time it seemed he might play tight end at Virginia Tech. Highly recruited basketball player out of high school turned down some Division I scholarship offers to play football. He's ahead to the 31. How about the praise for Logan Thomas from C.J. Mosley when we chatted with the Alabama linebacker earlier in the week. He said, Thomas reminds me of Cam Newton. Talk about the size, the strength, the running ability. Well, yeah, he reminds me of Cam Newton, except he's not as accurate, he's not as fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> So you're not buying no, the comparison. No, I, I think he can be very, very good. I just haven't seen it on a consistent basis yet. Well, ten and a half minutes to go in the first half. Edmund. Good run. Moved the pile out to the... 37, almost the 38-yard line. It'll be third down, about a yard and a half. Trey DePriest, Xavier Dixon on the stop for Alabama. Well, if you're offensive line coach Jeff Grimes with that young group up there, you'd love to see them change the line of scrimmage, sustain blocks, and keep their feet moving. As Mark May would say, chop, 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 chop. That's what they did. And the veteran center and David Wang and Andrew Miller, the right guard, is the best of that front bunch playing with two first-time starters at tackled if you're just joining us under pressure thomas incomplete they came with pressure on third down and short and it paid off right there is cj mosley and again want to talk about the intelligence of the defense cj mosley vacates his zone and is able to close understanding that his area is now safe and secure so he can become a secondary pass rusher to force the overthrow by Logan Thomas. There's Hughes from Terre Haute, Indiana. He didn't punt until his senior year in high school. Christian Jones back deep. He's getting a workout today. Get out there! He's from the same high school as Steve Weatherford, the longtime NFL punter who taught A.J. Howe to punt at a camp he did back in Terre Haute. It became a good one quickly. 42-yard punt there. Time out. <laughs> Only two races left until the chase begins. Jimmy Johnson trying to maintain his lead on the field. The competition will heat up right here in Georgia, just down the road at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. The NASCAR Spring Cup Series at Atlanta tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern. On ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Johnson, number one, Clint Boyer right behind, Carl Edwards third, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch. Round out the top five. McCarron had to throw it away as he was about to get drilled. Good pressure on the blitz by Kaishan Jarrett. Here's Reese. Sean, the debut for freshman quarterback Christian Hackenberg of Penn State is going beautifully against Syracuse Hackenberg and Geno Lewis. He's thrown for nearly 250 yards, two touchdowns longer than 50, 23-10 Nittany Lions in the fourth. And Reese, just as we threw it to you, Bill Lamagne threw a flag, perhaps for intentional grounding. There's no foul on the play for intentional grounding. Receiver number four was in the area. We have an incomplete pass, second down. The only problem with that, receiver number four was blocking. So he really wasn't an intended receiver. And Alabama gets away. And watch TJ Yellen. He's going to be there blocking. He's not involved in the route at all. There's no screen pass set mm. up. It's intentional grounding. Mm. Well, this offensive line clearly has some work to do. It was an impossibly high standard to live up to, at least by uh, the shoot. What they had last year, those three terrific linemen they lost. Yeldon taken down by J.R. Collins, shy of the 20. With an assist from the 18-yard line. He had a hole right there. 
That could be a little sign of fatigue when the 18 yard line is making the tackle. We talk about the players they lost. Barrett Jones is here. Winner of the Remington Trophy is the best center in the country. Ryan Kelly, sophomore from Westchester, Ohio, his replacement. Of course, Kelly got a lot of practice time with the first unit. Jones was injured, you might recall, leading up to the national championship game against Notre Dame. McCarron steps in on and has a first down. In traffic to the 32-yard line, DeAndre White. And the coaches were raving about what a great preseason camp he had. They needed 10, they got 12. And it starts with a pocket presence. Right there, A.J. McCarron trusting his offensive line, even though he was under pressure last play. Feet settled, feet moving, in position to throw, and that's why he's so accurate, because feet and shoulders were pointing to the target. He told us, Sean, he watched a lot of film in the offseason of Tom Brady about the pocket presence and moving in the pocket. And Brady has the knack for that one little step in just the right direction to get the time he needs to make a good throw. Karen's a very accurate passer, 67% career, best in Alabama history, and that one hit his receiver right in the number nine, and Amari Cooper dropped it with Kyle Fuller in coverage. Now, one that Amari Cooper should not, and probably in the future will not drop. But you'll see the great coverage by Fuller, number 17, not looking back at the quarterback until the last second, and maybe getting and disrupting the vision of Amari Cooper. Yeldon on second and ten. You can't tackle him with one man if you do it correctly. And Kaishan Jarrett did the junior safety from Tannersville, Pennsylvania. Only 22 yards rushing for Yeldon on 11 carries. And here's the deal. They're putting more up in the box or the line of scrimmage than Alabama has to block. Now, how are you supposed to get away from that? Well, they're playing man-to-man -man on the edges, and you have to be able to beat their corners with your wide receivers to give the safeties out of there to help. They can't do that because the Virginia Tech corners are matching up very well with the Alabama receivers. Third down and 10, midway through the second quarter. Alabama leading 21-7. McCarron off his back foot, intercepted by Kyle Fuller. And he's down at the 35-yard line. The Andrew White was the intended receiver. Bruce Smith on the sideline for Virginia Tech. One of their all-time great players. Loves what he sees from the Hokie defense, which has been terrific here in the first half. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Kyle Fuller ran a better route than the intended receiver, White, for Alabama. He broke on that in route before White broke on that in route. There's my former teammate, Bruce Smith, dominant player. Happy for his Hokies. Apparently still doing some curls as well. <laughs> Thomas looking for the deep ball after the turnover. Checks it down to Trey Edmonds in the flat. He gets to the 28. Kyle Fuller, senior from Baltimore, his fifth career interception. Older brother Vincent was a terrific defensive back for the Hokies. Played in the NFL. Corey Fuller was a wide receiver last year for the Hokies. And now the two brothers side by side, Kyle and Kendall. They're really, really good. And they're outstanding. At least today, both of them have been outstanding. Six and a half to go in the half. Slicing through Sam Rogers. Freshman walk on fullback from Mechanicsville, Virginia. They got very close to the first down, down to the 25. They'll need a yard here on third down. Just interesting when a young guy gets in the ball game, he's able to make a play. Sometimes your body and your mind get ahead of your feet. That's exactly what happened right to Rodgers. Virginia Tech. Tripped. Just stumbling forward with some running room. So excited for his first career carry. Timeout Hokies.
We're back at the Chick-fil-A kickoff game at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Alabama leading 21 to 7, but Virginia Tech is at the Bama 25-yard line. Third down and one. Sean, I'm thinking this is a four down territory. It's tough to score in this Alabama defense. While you're down here, take your shots. Out of the pistol, Logan Thomas keeps it. And it looks like he got enough for the first down. He did to the 23 yard line before he got driven back. Today, good. Patrick and C.J. Mosley, the stop, but not before. It's a first down for Virginia Tech. Not a bad idea to put the ball in the 6'6", 250 plus pound Logan Thomas's hands. Let him dig for it with that long body. That's the third first down for Virginia Tech. Alabama's had just five. This has been a defensive battle. Edmonds. Well, you have to like how quickly he attacks the hole, Chris, playing in his first game. There was no dancing through that hole. He hit it. Brandon Ivory made the tackle, but a quality gain of six on first down for Virginia Tech. This looks to me like he's running to prove a point. One man's loss, another man's opportunity. J.C. Coleman with the ankle injuries. Edmonds said, give me my shot and take it. He did. Good job. Tony Gregory injured. Fourth ACL injury. Michael Holmes thrown out of school. They don't have a lot of depth. That running back, late pitch. Edmonds did well to catch it. Actually got a half yard before he got walloped. Deion Blue up from the corner. Ed Stinson also in on the stop. Here's another big third down for the Hokies with under five minutes to go in the half. Third down and four. Well, kind of Nazi moron is a physical corner. Well, Alabama has physical corners. They both come up and support the run with toughness. Let's see if Alabama plays a little man-to-man. -man. I wouldn't be surprised. If Virginia Tech comes out in that little bit of a, a bunch formation with those crossing routes to help defeat the man coverage. The crossing route coming right there. This will stop the play. Don't see a flag, but there is one. Delay game. Offense, number three. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. You have to have some awareness if you're Logan Thomas in this situation. Crucial third down. Get a T.O. Fourth penalty against the Hokies. They are in field goal range with a very good kicker, Cody Jernell. Thomas locks it up and it almost intercepted. Deion Blue had position. Dimitri Knowles able to prevent the interception. Textbook corner play from both sides. Blue staying on the outside because he knows he has inside help. And look at him play the receiver. Look and lean. Turn when the receiver's head turns. Logan Thomas maybe took a little off of that because of the forced throw early on by Xavier Dixon. Cody Jernell had a good year last year. 39-yard try from the right hash mark. And it is good right down the middle. Set up by the interception by Fuller. It's 21-10. Approaching halftime, Alabama leading Virginia Tech 21 to 10. After the field goal by Janelle, Mitchell Ludwig kicks off. Christian Jones from the seven. They didn't get him down. Touchdown is second of the night. A punt return and now a kickoff return for a touchdown for Jones. John, you know that's a dagger right in Frank Beamer's heart. He controls those special teams, and they've let him down twice. 
And for so many years, they were known as the best special teams program in the country. That's where Beamer Ball came from. The way they excelled on special teams, that is no longer the case in Blacksburg. You have to feel for the defense as the extra point is added by Foster. Alabama has 89 yards of offense in this half and leads 28 to 10. A 94-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, and it looked like Jones was down along the near numbers. And the coverage isn't bad, but when you have the power and you do not wrap up players and the power of Jones, Rodgers had a chance at him, the true freshman fullback. But watch Jones. He'll just bounce off like he's not even there. They'll never quit on the play. Their Alabama Crimson Tide. Great effort is expected, and great effort is what you get. And Christian Jones, second career kickoff return for a touchdown, the second touchdown of the night. Took back a punt less than two minutes into the game for a score. The Alabama defense has scored and the interception returned by Vinny Sunseri. They've scored just one offensive touchdown. Merbeck Jones on special teams has almost doubled the output of the Alabama offense. You can see there where the depth of Virginia Tech. We like to get some depth on those special teams, but they're so thin at a lot of positions that you're playing with players that maybe aren't ready to play at this level yet. And it's been proven. The punt return and a kickoff return. Well, Frank Beamer might have been the first to really put almost all starters out on those special teams units. One of the reasons why they used to dominate. Darian Green elected to bring it out, and he got buried by Vinny Sunseri at the 15-yard line. Here's Reese Davis. All right, Sean, it's time for Sports Center right now, brought to you by Ally Bank. Tim Tebow's run with the Patriots is over. The team releasing him today, subject to waivers. If he clears waivers, he'll be a free agent and can sign with any team. Johnny Manziel made his return in the second half. Three touchdown passes. Got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, too, as the Aggies took care of Rice, 52-31. Here it's 28-10 for the number one team in the country, Alabama, which has next week off. And then in two weeks, they'll try to avenge their only loss of last season against Johnny Manziel and Texas A&M when they traveled down to College Station. Trey Edmonds was the ball carrier on first down for Virginia Tech, and he got a couple. No matter what you think about Johnny Manziel, he has that it factor. Everybody wants that it factor. He has it. And you can just see the energy of the whole team change when he came on the field the second half today. He struggled early in that game. Trailed for a while. He led by seven at the half, and he came in to play the second half. Alvin Tomlinson brought down Edmonds. We wonder if Alabama will think about using its timeouts here. I would think if they stop him on this third down play, Absolutely. they would. Yeah. All three timeouts left for the Crimson Tide. Third and eight Hokies from their own 18. And they're all playing man to man across the board. Good on good. And so far, the corners of Alabama have won their man coverage battles. Logan Thomas is three for 13 for 40 yards and an interception. Pressure. And throws it away. And again, in fairness to Logan Thomas, Chris, you look at this wide receiver group for Virginia Tech. Who's the playmaker? Right now, you really can't identify anybody who is. No, absolutely, Sean. And it's been proven because when you watch from the wide angle and you can see the whole field, there's no separation being created between the wide receivers of Virginia Tech or the secondary of Alabama. And so he has nowhere to throw. Saw Aaron Moorhead, former NFL players, the new wide receiver coach, talking to Dimitri Knowles as he came off the field. Sixth punt of the half for A.J. Hughes. And not a good one. Short and wobbly. With a good bounce. And finally down to the 34-yard line. A great opening weekend of college football. 
Continues Monday. Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week from Heinz Field. The Pittsburgh Panthers going to make their ACC debut when they host Florida State, ranked number 11. Seminoles and Panthers Monday night at 8 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. I expect Pitt to be improved under the second year of Paul Chris. I know one thing, they're going to be physical. And Florida State's in for a street fight when they go to Pittsburgh. Panthers were 6-7 and seven under Paul Chris last year. Pittsburgh and Syracuse moving into the ACC. This year in football, D. Hart. Flag down. He's down at the 35, wrapped up by Luther Matty. D. Hart bothered by a lot of knee injuries the last few years, limited his playing time. Holding. Offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty for his spot. Still first down. Well, that should never happen. You know why? He's away from the play. So Quanjo Cyrus, that's his second penalty of the night, shouldn't hold away from the play because it's not a factor. You've got to be smarter than that, disciplined. He's from Hyattsville, Maryland, out of DeMatha Catholic High School. Families from the African nation of Cameroon came to this country, to Maryland, when he was four years old, but for much of his youth, he was a soccer player. Dad played soccer with distinction in Cameroon. Eventually grew in to be a football player. Hart ahead to the 29-yard line. Kendall Fuller made the tackle. And the Hokies going to use their last time out of the half. And take advantage of the break to check back in with Reese Davis. All right, Sean Buick halftime reports just around the corner. Mark May and Lou Holtz will join me. Johnny Football is back and brought a little controversy with him. The Buckeyes were rolling easily, had a few little missteps along the way, and Notre Dame made their debut. Tommy Reese started strong, finished well also. Mark and Lou, plenty of highlights all coming up in the Buick halftime report. Here, A.J. McCarron in Alabama. Leading 28 to 10. You mentioned the chip on his shoulder. And he admitted he had one, Chris, when we spoke with him the other day. He said, we want to prove the doubters wrong. I said, well, <laughs> you got 58 out of 60 votes in the AP preseason poll. Doesn't seem like many people doubt you. Most are giving you credit. He said, well, because we've won a couple in a row, they feel like they have to pick us. But they don't really believe <laughs> we're going to do it. I don't know how he knows that. But I believe it. I think, I think Coach Saban does a good job of training these guys to make them think certain things that he wants them to think. All right, again. A little surprised, Sean, that they want a conservative on this drive. Well, their offense hasn't been very good. No. I think that's been the big negative of the half. No sustained offense to speak of, just 95 yards the only from reason, scrimmage. The only reason why I say that is because you, you want to get that two-minute work in at game speed and game tempo mm -hmm. anytime that you can. That, that's think Nick Saban's first thought here is he wants to win the game and the way the offense is playing doesn't want to make the key mistake. I can understand that with a seven point lead but with an 18 point lead you might gamble just a tap. I'm sure Nick will appreciate the suggestion <laughs> if you want to sit it down yeah, to him. I will. <laughs> Did he heart the ball carrier? Oh, she, yeah. And Virginia Tech can't stop the clock again. Only one offensive touchdown. The two scored by Christian Jones. A punt return, a kickoff return, and the defense brought one back for a score as well. And Alabama will get the second half kickoff. Leading 28 to 10 despite just 96 yards of offense and five first downs for Alabama in the first 30 minutes. Here's Shannon. Coach, special teams, there's been some breakdowns in that area. What have you seen? What's going on? Well, you know, when you're playing young guys, and we're playing a lot of them, that's first place, you see breakdowns. And uh, we've had a, two of them. But, uh, just uh, got to get that better. Football is such a mental game. What would be the first thing that you say to the guys in the locker room well, to keep them in this? Well, I'm proud of the way we played. We just haven't played well enough. Two touchdowns off our kicking game, and uh, but we're playing, we're playing our hearts out. Thanks, Coach. They are indeed, particularly the defense. 
Hard to imagine you played defensively as well as they did and be behind by 18 points, but they are because of this. Christian Jones, the star of the half. Now back to Reese, Mark, and May, the Buick halftime report. This is Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week. Back to ESPN's college football primetime and the Chick-fil-A kickoff game presented by Hampton Hotels from the sold-out Georgia Dome in Atlanta. The number one team in the country, Alabama, leading Virginia Tech 28 to 10, despite the fact the Tide had just 97 yards of offense and only one offensive touchdown in that first half. Frank Beamer's team gave up two scores on special teams, a punt return and a kickoff return for a touchdown by Christian Jones of Alabama. The Alabama defense also scored. Alabama, Nick Saban, you know, coaches talked about they like to have some teaching points. There's a lot to work on when it comes to the offensive side of the ball for the Tide. Yeah, the biggest problem they're having is the strength of their team is their skill positions or wide receivers. They're not creating any separation with the Virginia Tech defensive backs, especially the uh, Fuller brothers. And then on the other side, when you look at Virginia Tech, if I'm in there, I'm saying defense, it's one of the best performances I've seen the Virginia Tech defense play in a long time. Keep it up and give our offense a chance. And it's about field position, too. they got to help their offense by creating field position so they don't have a long distance to go against this stout Alabama defense. Well, it's been a while since 2009, in fact, that a team has scored a touchdown on an interception return, a punt return, and a kickoff return in the same game. Stanford, the last team to do it against San Jose State in 2009. Mitchell Ludwig kicked off for the Hokies. Here's Christian Jones, and I think Frank Beamer might have read the special teams, the riot act, as Jones barely made the 15-yard line. Here's Shannon Spate. Well, I spoke with Nick Saban as he led his team out of that locker room just moments ago, and despite the numbers on the scoreboard, he told me he just doesn't feel that his team has played the way that they're supposed to play. Not enough intensity, not enough discipline for everyone to do their job. Specifically, I asked him about the offensive line. He said there are too many negative plays, too many missed blocks, so that is certainly an area where he is going to keep his eye this second half. Not only miss blocks, Sean, but they have a lot of people up at that line of scrimmage, so they don't have enough blockers to block all the defenders for the Hokies. You know, when you play Virginia Tech, they're going to have eight or nine up around the line. They get Yeldon free, and he's chopped out of bounds across the 40. They'll give him the 42-yard line for a 27-yard gain. They had only four rushes. In the first half, that went for more than three yards, Alabama. Remember the first half when TJ got tackled by the 18-yard line? That was the exact same play. Ryan Kelly did a nice job of sealing Edwards, number 24, the middle linebacker, creating a hole for Yeldon. Well, rushes now for 49 yards. Seven of his 11 carries in the first half went for two yards or fewer. Dalton Fowler in at fullback. McCarron is sacked. Back at the 35-yard line. Second sack of the night for the Virginia Tech defense. Jack Tyler, who's been a standout again tonight. Yeah, that's why we gave him the Impact Player Award at the beginning of the game, because we knew he would be. And this is called a green dog. He has man-to-man -man coverage on Yeldon. So instead of playing many men, once he sees Yeldon go to block, he becomes a fifth pass rusher. But Foster exactly wanted to do that coming into the game. Well executed by Jack Tyler. And Bud Foster said he had all the respect in the world for McCarron, what he's done so accurate in recent years. So, but he played behind the line that gave him all day to throw. That is not the case tonight. Had to set up a screen to Yeldon, and Hopkins wasn't going to allow it to happen. Derek blew that play up. 
And when you're an inside defensive lineman and you get a short set by your offensive lineman, and they're not giving any ground, you're able to read screen. As soon as the offensive lineman vacates, the rule is you get on his hip and chase him down the line of scrimmage. Again, execution, and I can't say enough about the performance of the two inside guys for Virginia Tech, Hopkins and Maddie. Big fellas. Third and 17, here comes the blitz. They set up a screen for Cooper, and he swung down. Good response by the defense. Tariq Edwards tackled Cooper. You know, Sean, although Kyle Fuller did not make the play, he did his job by taking contain as a corner. You have to force the ball back inside, forcing Cooper to retreat and allowing the pursuit of the hooky defense to clean up. Cody Mandel to punt for the fourth time. And the true freshman Kendall Fuller goes back deep. Good kick. Fuller. Flagged down for a block in the back and Fuller's down by Landon Collins. Who's been a standout covering punts tonight for Alabama. 50-yard punt. And another mistake on the special teams unit. With the offense that is struggling to move the football, you want to try to create some type of field position, and this is bad field position. Bill Lamagne, it was mentioned many times in the past, terrific referee, but he usually has to talk to every member of his crew, it seems, before they... Illegal block in the back on the return. Number 53. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Drew Burns called for the penalty. Back up linebacker. So it won't be good field position for Logan Thomas, and he doesn't have good stats. Three for 14. An interception that was returned by Vinny Sanceri for a touchdown. And as we said a couple of times, Chris, in the first half, the crowd trying to make it difficult for him. Nobody in that wide receiver core that jumps out as a playmaker for him right now. Edmonds, big hole and a first down to get them out of that hole. As he carried to the 17-yard line. John Fulton made the stop over 100 yards in his first career game for Trey Edmonds. Against the number one defense last year in Alabama. Again, taking advantage of his opportunity. You love to see that from a young player. It's very rare to rush for 100 yards against the Crimson Tide defense. That was a gain of 12. He's up to 118. And that coming into tonight's game since 2008, the Alabama defense had allowed only three to go for 100 yards or more against them. Three since 2008. Far and away, the best such number in the country. Timeout, Hokies. Three minutes into the second half. The DirecTV drive to the national championship bus is with us here in Atlanta. We'll be traveling across the country all season long following the biggest stories in college football. Its final stop, of course, is the Vizio BCS national championship game at the Rose Bowl on January 6th in this, the last season of the BCS era, which began in 1998. Alabama trying to win its third straight national championship, trying to open its season with a win. Leading 28 to 10 here in the opening moments of the third quarter. On first and 10 for Virginia Tech, Trey Edmonds carries to the 24. Gain of six. Sean, if you're Virginia Tech, you want to get Logan Thomas back on track. Okay, you have to first look at what Alabama is doing defensively. They're playing bump and run man-to-man -man coverage. You have to have some type of formation that are man beaters. So you want to run some pick routes, a little bit of a cluster formation because there's no separation being created between the Virginia Tech receivers and the Alabama defensive backs. Example A. Thomas 
Looked like he was trying to take it back from Edmonds, and Edmonds wasn't going to let him keep it. And it's a loss of three. It in Hubbard, and it's Stinson combined on the stop for the Tide. Caught a up a little bit in the land of confusion. And just to be <laughs> safe, let me hold on to it. Third down and five. They're just two out of nine on third down tonight. You see that tough man-to-man -man across the board. 38 combined points, only 10 combined first downs, and Thomas threw a sinker low and away. You know, you're exactly right. He did throw a sinker low and away, but in fairness to Logan Thomas, there's nobody to throw the ball to. Everybody's covered. Saw Jonathan McLaughlin, the left tackle, there, the true freshman in his first game. Looked like he had a pretty good hold of the face mask of Adrian Hubbard on the rush. He's done a nice job, though. He's holding mm -hmm. his own tonight. Christian Jones done a great job. Might be the national player of the week with punt return and a kickoff return for a touchdown. Hughes handled the low snap. Short punt, great bounce. But it came right up into the numbers of Jones. And he's to the 46-yard line, adding to his good night. Chuck Clark made the tackle for the Hokies. 48-yard punt, 16-yard return. Number one Bama by 18. The 2013 Chick-fil-A kickoff game is presented by Hampton Hotels. Feel the Hamptonality. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Windows Phone. Meet the 41 megapixel Windows Phone Nokia Lumina 1020. Here's a look at the performance and adaptation of the Grimm Brothers Rumpel Stiltskin. It's currently going on at the Center for Puppetry Arts right here in Atlanta. Since 1978, that center has introduced. A lot of visitors, millions were told, to the wonder and art of puppetry. A.G. McCarron on first and ten from the 45, trying to pull the string on a deep ball. Over through the Andrew Wright. We didn't know that our, uh, apparently these are from the uh, Center of Puppetry. <laughs> Would you like to be me for a minute and say something really stupid? No, I, I would like to say that I've always been wanting to do something to you for a very long time. <laughs> there, maybe I can. <laughs> that is That's not a great very puck. nice. That is not very nice. I'm Chris Spielman, and I really just want to go out and hit somebody right now on that field. I've got a lot of pent up aggression. But I, I, I'm not sure I like the likeness. You look good. Yours looks a lot like you, but mine. Does Shannon have a, a puppet? What do you guys think? Mari Cooper. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> I, I you. I can't hold the mic and pull the string, but I've been dodging cars for a few years, and now I'm dodging receivers. <laughs> See, that? I didn't even notice the string. They literally surprised us with this and handed it to us during the break. I didn't know that if we pulled the string, the mouth moves. Oh. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to know how they knew I was going to wear purple today. That's I good. Saban must feel this way. And a lot of times, <laughs> he orchestrates just about yes, everything that happens in the program. He's in control, that's for sure. Your string doesn't work anymore after the violent hit you took. Yeah, that was very violent. Third and six, McCarron incomplete. The Virginia Tech defense holds again. Tended for Coopers at a frustrating night. And I think even though they're ahead by 18, the Tide fans watching this are being a little concerned about the offense. Doesn't look good. No, and I think if you would ask Nick Saban, what's what's the problem, or how would you break down this game so far? It's not clean. Mm -hmm. And right there, J. A. Car J. R. Collins for Virginia Tech, number 42, forced an early throw by McCarron, and he could not get his left foot going to the target. That's why the ball was low and away. Looks like they might be coming after this punt. Nobody back deep for Virginia Tech. Mandel does get it off. What? I don't agree with that, Sean. I think you have somebody back there. It worked out for him, but you want to save yards and save field position as much as you can. Denzel Duvall downed it near the 18-yard line. Here's Reese. All right, Sean. 
Remember a couple years ago, Oregon State started the season, lost to Sacramento State. Well, they're playing Eastern Washington, number four in FCS, and Eastern Washington's up. Vernon Adams hitting Cooper Cup with a touchdown. It's 29 17 at halftime. Wow. That's the big surprise last night. Perhaps not as big a surprise to some, including Lou Holtz, who called it North Dakota State beating Kansas State. Edmund slipped as he took the handoff. John Fulton there for the Alabama defense. Yeah, they're starting to dial up a little bit of pressure. And it's tough to run when you cannot block a blitzing corner. And a lot of times you'll see that corner blitz when it's on the hash mark because it's a short distance for a player like Fulton to go to close the gate. He's physical. I really like him at corner. Alabama's won its last 11 season openers. Play action pass. Thomas, can he finally find somebody open? No, he stumbled as he went to dump it off for Edmonds. I don't know where the answers are going to come in terms of the wide receiver group for Virginia Tech. Just the good news, Chris, is after today, their schedule gets a lot easier. They're not going to be facing the Alabama defense. These receivers will have a better chance of getting open in the next three weeks. They play Western Carolina. East Carolina and Marshall where they bounce into ACC play when they come back here to Atlanta to play Georgia Tech in less than a month. Thomas won for his last 13. This is third and 11. There's the deep ball and it's batted away from Knowles by Dion Blue. It's the same story. There's no separation be, being created by the Virginia Tech wide receivers and actually a ball that maybe could have been caught. And Blue is able to make, get that left hand in there to just distract and deflect. A.J. Hughes, his eighth punt. Christian Jones back deep. Average 47 yards per punt inside the dome here tonight. Fair catch signaled and made by Jones. Going to mark it near the 35 yard line. Well, Christian Jones is finding success tonight. The special teams area is brought to you by Expedia. First score of the night. 72 yard punt return for a touchdown. Just a minute and 39 seconds in to make it 7 0 Alabama. And then he did it again with a kickoff return. The final score of the first half that made it 28 to 10. He went 94 yards when the Hokies thought they had him bottled up. Yeldon is the running back. Two tight ends for the Crimson Tide. TJ's ahead to the 38. He says it's his goal to be the best running back they've ever had. And they've had a steady stream of talent in recent years. Mark Ingram, Trent Richardson, Eddie Lacy. A lot of times in the last few years they've worked in tandem. Last year, Lacy and Yeldon, a terrific duo. Looks like they're still trying to figure out who might be the guy to step in with some regularity behind Yeldon. Right now, it's Alti Tenpenny, a true freshman. I believe they have some talented young people behind him. The game's been so tight they've had Yeldon in there for most of it. And Penpenny gets a rude welcome to college football. Gang tackled, led by Jack Tyler and Daddy Nicholas. And the thing is, is that Virginia Tech is daring Alabama to throw the football. It's just a battle of wills. It's almost like Alabama's offense is being stubborn. They have one safety about 15 yards deep, both corners pressed, and eight guys in the line of scrimmage. And they're refusing to challenge Virginia Tech. Now, it's going to come, but right now, they're playing right into Virginia Tech's hands, making it easy to defend a run. Third down and 11. Good protection from this new offensive line. 
And now McCarron running for his life and taken down from behind. Nigel Williams. Freshman from Richmond with the third sack of the night for Virginia Tech. Actually, Virginia Tech is sitting in a zone right now, but the key is they don't cover just space. They're all jumping men, and by the time the guy broke open, Williams was there to close the deal on A.J. McCarron. So Mandel punts again. And they set up for a return. Kendall Fuller hoping for a block, and he got one. Got one from his brother, Kyle. And then... The ball lowered the boom on his younger brother. Heavy hitting on both sides and all of it legal. Oh, big brother protection. Can't get two, though. And in Collins took the blow for Alabama, and then the ball responded for his teammate. Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues tonight on ESPN and SEC Big 12 matchup. LSU and TCU, the Tigers and Horned Frogs, college football primetime. Presented by Hampton Hotels tonight at 9 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. One of the great inventions of this or any time in the history of mankind. I agree. I think that's going to be a good game. I really do. Yep. I think TCU is going to be ready. Hmm. Sniping back and forth in the press. I like that. Between the two schools already. Should be a spirited battle. Two schools that play great defense every year. Gary Edmonds back to the line, wrapped up by Jeffrey Pagan. Here's Shannon Spake. Well, Sean, as you can imagine, it really is a tale of two games down here on the Virginia Tech sideline. You have the defense that is just full of energy and excitement. The offense, on the other hand, it, it's very calm over there. And watching Jeff Grimes, he's, he's really calm when he's talking to about his offensive line. And Frank Beamer had said that he wanted to use this game as a learning experience because it's such a great team to expose what they need to work on. I don't think the offensive line's been a problem tonight. I thought I think the off offensive line has played pretty well. Well, just no threats in the receiver area. Going deep, and nobody open. And people stumbling and fumbling, and no incomplete, no complete pass. Rather, Carlos Parker. They try a new guy, a true freshman, is trying to get deep, but he started stumbling around near midfield. Yeah, their feet are going to get caught up, but again, you see the tight coverage. Not only by Virginia Tech, but these two corners from Alabama, outstanding all night. There's a flag down on the near sideline, near the 27-yard line, just past the line of scrimmage. We have an ineligible receiver, number 18. He was covered downfield. That penalty's been declined. Third down. Again, third and ten, Sean. If they line up man to man, you have to run some type of crossing route or pick routes. I have yet to see that. We saw that bunch formation in the first half. We have not seen that in the second half. That's what will help you create separation. Only four first downs for the Hokies. Six minutes to go, third quarter. Blitz on third and nine. Edmonds trying to run through it and can't. Cross the line, and that's all. Ed Stinson, the primary tackler. And another three and out for Virginia Tech. You know, they managed to rally late last year, Chris, won their last two regular season games to get to 6-6 six and six and become bowl eligible for the 20th year in a row and then won the bowl game against Rutgers. They had only 196 yards of offense and 13 points in an overtime win of the bowl game. They averaged 18 and a half points per game their last six games last year. In a prolonged struggle, here's Christian Jones running the punt across midfield, swung down by Chuck Clark. Jones continues to have a big night, as does Reese Davis. Sean, in the offseason, Mike Leach said the bottom of the Pac-12 was better than the bottom of the SEC, and here's the game to settle that dispute. Washington State against Auburn. Wazoo is up 7-0. Trey Mason scored for the Tigers. It's on ESPNU early second quarter. Gus Malzahn's team up by a single. Interesting comment from Mike Lee. Oh, yeah. They're always interesting. I was going to say, he's an interesting guy. 19-yard punt return by Jones has McCarron in the offense in plus territory. After the sixth three and out of the night for Virginia Tech. 
Karen just 9 out of 19 for 72 yards. Yeldon broke the tackle. And as the first down, it seems, Jack Tyler knocked him down from behind. And they are going to move the chains. First down, Alabama on a 10-yard run. Derek Donardo coming off the field for the Hokie defense backup linebacker. They had Yeldon knocked his helmet off, and again, one of the strengths of T.J. Yeldon, yards after contact, and ran right through the arms and helmet of Donardo. Yeldon tried to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage, but didn't get there. Tariq Edwards, Luther Maddy blew up that play. And here are the numbers for Alabama last year. They had one of the best offensive seasons in school history, but way off those numbers tonight against this very good Virginia Tech defense. It's almost like they're stubborn and saying, we're going to run the ball and we're going to run the ball. And I'm telling you, they'll be able to run it if they take some shots on first down, not second and long or third and long. Throwing the football. Alabama last year set the school record for points scored in the season and for offensive touchdowns. Cooper, beautiful throw by McCarron, but Amari couldn't hang on. Feathered it in there nicely. Did the senior quarterback, Kyle Fuller, again in on the stop with help from the safety, Dietrich Bonner. And Kyle Fuller's making a name for himself. First of all, the athleticism with the hip flip, getting the arm right and raking the arms, then taking a shot from his own guy. And Dietrich Bonner. But just the discipline to play the receiver, trust your training, and when the hands go up, take your right arm and swat the arms of the receiver. Just, I can't say enough about the kid, both guys. Blitz coming, McCarron saw it coming. Here's the man open. Jones is in the end zone again. His third touchdown of the night, his first on offense. And if he's not the National Player of the Week, Chris, there must be somebody else somewhere else doing something very special. He's been Alabama's offense tonight. Cade Foster. For the extra point. Trying to make it 35 to 10. Christian Jones. A punt return for a touchdown, a kickoff return for a touchdown, and now a TD reception of 38 yards. Allstate is celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. For each field goal and extra point kick to date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship funds. Christian Jones has earned his scholarship tonight. Junior from Adamsville, Alabama. Three touchdowns. And the lead is 35 to 10. Even with that touchdown, still just 163 yards of offense for the Crimson Tide. Adam Griffith to kick off. Darian Green, Chris Mangus. Back to field it for the Hokies. This is Green, a freshman from Portsmouth, Virginia. And he did well to get across the 20. It looked like they might hem him in inside the 10. Well, if you can't get Fuller, let's get Fry number 26. If you're going to play man-to-man -man with no safety help, 
You cannot give a free release to the inside slot receiver. There's no contact, no disruption of the route, and when you have an explosive player like Christian Jones, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage at the snap of the football. You don't disrupt him, he's going to run right by you. We should, he should know that. He's already had touchdown for a kickoff and a punt. Logan Thomas flagged down. He takes off running. Has the first down if it stands. It looked like there was some movement on the Virginia Tech side. Illegal motion. Offense. Number 18. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. DJ Coles guilty of the penalty. Well, that's the night for Christian Jones. Three touchdowns. Two of them on special teams. It's nice to have him coming off the bench on offense, isn't it, with the fresh legs? That's the depth that Alabama has at their skill positions. Sixth penalty against the Hokies. Alabama's been flagged just twice. In the last four years, Alabama, the second least penalized team in the country. So good in so many areas, including those that involve discipline. Ashawn Robinson and Brandon Ivory put a pretty good pop on Edmonds. Only Navy has been penalized less over the last four years than Alabama. Alabama doesn't turn it over. Last 54 games, Chris, entering tonight, 53 turnovers. Fewer than... The turnover per game, the only team in the country that can make that claim over the last four years. When you don't turn it over, you're not penalized. You're going to win. Nice throw. One of the few times tonight, a man open. It's Joshua Stanford, highly touted freshman with his first catch out of Mississauga, Ontario, just outside Toronto. 16-yard game. Well, this is what Logan Thomas is capable of. Again, knowing where the receivers are and able to dump it over a corner's head and in between a phrase safety. That's what he's capable of doing. The problem is, I don't know if he has the skill around him to do that on a consistent basis. At least we haven't seen it tonight. Second career catch for Stanford. He played last year against Austin P. Had a catch, had a knee injury, missed the rest of the year, given a medical red shirt. Edmonds ahead to the 44 yard line three yards shy of the marker we're under two minutes to go now in the third quarter and Alabama leads by 25 just a note there on Edmonds CJ Mosley had him dead to rights in the hole CJ's an all-american linebacker Edmonds threw the spin move on him CJ throw a no hitter Edmonds up to 132 yards Rushing, they have just 197 yards of total offense. Thomas kept it. C.J. Mosley wrapped him up right at the line of scrimmage. Like all great players do, miss a tackle, you make amends by getting a big six foot six Logan on the ground. Well, he said he thought about coming out in the NFL draft at the end of last year meaning they would have had 10 players drafted decide to come back for a chance to win one more national championship make history by helping his team win a third in a row a solid player equally talented against the run and the pass Nick Saban hoping he'll step it up even more in the leadership area with this defense blitz Thomas got it off and it might be a first down Dimitri Knowles tackled immediately by Mosley they're going to give him the spot and a first down for the Hokies with a half minute to go in the quarter. Well, that's exactly what we've been asking them to do is to get in that bunch formation to beat the man and run crossing routes to pick off the defenders. And they're able to convert the first down. Good call by Scott Leffler. Leffler, the offensive coordinator, raves about Logan Thomas. That he's improved in the last eight months more than any quarterback that he's ever been around. Leffler's been around guys like Tom Brady when he was at Michigan and Chad Henney, Tim Tebow when he was at Florida. Up for grabs it goes and it's incomplete. In the direction of Dimitri Knowles, Dion Blue had a better chance on the last play of the third quarter. 
This one touchdown in the quarter was scored by Alabama by Christian Jones. His third of the night. And then the first touchdown pass of the night for A.J. McCarron, the senior from Mobile. We'll be back with the fourth quarter from Atlanta right after this. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime in the Chick-fil-A kickoff game presented by Hampton Hotels from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. 35 to 10 Alabama. That's been a busy building the last few days. Falcons played a Exhibition game here Thursday night. Georgia State was in here last night for its opener, lost to Samford. And now this neutral site game. Virginia Tech and Alabama. Frank Beamer might not want to play more of these neutral site openers. It's the fifth time they've opened in a neutral site game. They've lost the previous four. First play of the fourth quarter is Trey Edmonds getting spilled by Denzel the ball right at the line of scrimmage. Third down and ten. Sean, what's the message so far after three quarters that Alabama's given you? I, I think the offensive line has a little work to do to become cohesive. You know, they did try to mix and match a little bit, try some players at different spots. I think as they settle in on this unit and give it more time, they clearly have talent. But Doug Nussmeyer said he was worried about the communication, both verbal and nonverbal, along that offensive line. Thomas has time too high. Looking for Joshua Stanford. Ha ha, Clinton Dix had a chance for an interception. First of all, it starts with good protection. But we talked about C.J. Mosley being smart on a run in the pass he gets enough depth and he forces the high throw by Logan Thomas by being in a proper position and underneath the crossing route that's a smart linebacker understanding down and distance and answer the rest of your question there's Jones again he's touched the ball seven times tonight and has three touchdowns short punt by AJ Hughes got a good bounce I think part of it for the Alabama offense is that they're playing against a very good defensive team and a very well coached defensive team. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Shannon Spake back at the Chick fil A kickoff game at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Down on the sidelines there, Mark Ingram, Julio Jones. Of course, Julio plays. His home games here in the Georgia Dome for the Falcons. They're going to open their season against each other. Falcons and the Saints. Week from tomorrow in New Orleans. Our game run. Traps out of your ears. Nobody can can't hear what anybody's saying. We're in the stands tonight, 73,114, a sellout. DJ Yeldon. near the 25. Here's Reese Davis. John, time for Sports Center right now, brought to you by Ally Bank. Patriots released Tim Tebow. Tim struggled for much of the preseason. Now, he clears waivers. He'll be a free agent and eligible to sign with any team that chooses to sign him. Johnny Manziel made his return in the second half against Rice. Hit six of eight for three touchdowns. Also got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Sports Center's on ESPN News. It'll roll around 10 Eastern. We look forward to it. Might say it was a signature win for Texas A&M today. Or well, you might not. Yeldon finally getting some running room. Possible this defense would be getting a bit tired. Tyrell Wilson made the stop a gain of eight. They're playing a lot of plays. See the offense of Virginia Tech, the only thing that they provided there's a lot of three and outs for this defense. Do you think, given what happened with Johnny Manziel, the credibility of the NCAA, at least as a disciplinary organization, is now at just about an all-time low? I can't imagine how it could be any lower. Well, I think a lot of people would think that again. I'm not privy not to all of Yeah. And, and, you know, it certainly looks like he's He's guilty, but if, you know, you got to trust what they say and what they find. They have all the information. 
you know, you got to remember, too, that the NCAA is the rule enforcers. They don't make the law. They just enforce the law. Interesting point. What would you tell Johnny if you were his coach? I would say, I would I would to do what our colleague or Bill Curry would do or Herm Edwards. I'd bring him in the office and say, tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. Did you give money for signing these autographs? And if you did, then we got to protect the players on his team. It didn't break the rules and you have to sit out. McCarron's pass juggled and incomplete. We're getting some of the young people in. The previous carry was by Derrick Henry, sort of the top running back recruit in the country out of Florida. And then that was intended for O.J. Howard, who's a true freshman tight end and another five-star recruit in this loaded true freshman class for Alabama. Yeah, in about another six games, O.J. Howard would bring that in. And a point to make right there in is the efficiency and the accuracy of A.J. McCarron throwing the deep ball. He's outstanding. He completed 65% or 20 yards or more last year. And he'll be on pace to do that again this year. McCarron just dumps it off, threw it away as he was under pressure. And they're going to flag him now for intentional grounding after some consideration by the officials. Wanted to make sure they got it right. Now you see the conversation between Hen Henry and McCarron. I guarantee you a true Central freshman. Grounding. Number 10 in the offense. Spot foul. Lost it down. Fourth down. Is being taught about pass protection. A.J. McCarron was telling him where you need to protect. Because that's where a lot of true freshman running backs come in as they struggle in pass protection. Henry, the all-time leader in high school football and career rushing yards, more than 12,000 yards, Uly High School in Florida, over 4,200 yards alone last year. Slowed by the injury. He fractured leg in the spring, didn't play in the spring game. Mandel got it off. Tyshawn Jarrett tackled immediately. And the Alabama special teams, for the most part, have been outstanding. Landon Collins, the tackle. 12 minutes to go here in Atlanta. The 2013 Chick-fil-A kickoff game. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Cadillac. Strong defensive performance to open the season for Alabama. They've allowed just the one touchdown on the long run, 78 yards by Trey Edmonds. Here are the numbers over the last four seasons. <laughs> the defense has given up 61 touchdowns. That is 31 fewer than any other team in the country. Those are some great defenses on that graphic beyond Alabama. That is a remarkable number. Defense puts heat on. Logan Thomas was looking for DJ Coles. And DJ Coles was looking to get hit and took his eye off the ball. That's the second time tonight. And that ball was right there, right on target. They really have to address that receiver position if they want to compete for an ACC title. They really have to address it because it's bad right now. Good news is their schedule is very easy. They don't have another ranked opponent on their schedule. Virginia Tech, as of right now, chance some ACC teams to move into the ranking. There's another drop ball by DJ Cole. Had an awful night. Mentioned the non-conference schedule. Three more games. They'll be favored in all three of them, and then they jump into ACC play. But as you can see, they don't play Florida State. Clemson's not on that list. Mm -hmm. Two teams that are in the top 11 in the country right now. I think at some point Miami's going to move into the rankings. That's a program moving back in the right direction under Al Golden. Agreed. Third down and 10. Thomas managed to stay on his feet and got it off in time for another drop. This one in the flat. Xavier Dixon applied the pressure that time. 
Logan Thomas is five for 25 passing tonight for 59 yards and an interception. And, 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 uh, to be fair, I mean, there's some passes that he's missed, but there's also times where there's no separation created. He has no targets to throw to. In just this last series, we saw three drops where the ball was on target. Alabama giving some other people a chance to dissipate. D. Hart now back for the punt. And he's smothered immediately by Chuck Clark, who's had a good night covering kicks. That was the 11th punt of the night for Hughes after the eighth three and out for the Hokie offense. Only two races left until the chase begins. Jimmy Johnson's trying to maintain his lead on the field. The competition is right down the road this weekend at the Atlanta Motor Speedway NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta tomorrow night, 7 Eastern on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. NASCAR legend Shannon Spake, part of our broadcast team tonight. Welcome her to our team this year and Derek Henry stopped at the line of scrimmage and Shannon and these two coaches we have a couple of men who love them some NASCAR. That's right Sean I mean you really can't walk five feet in the NASCAR garage without running into a fan of either Virginia Tech or Alabama and Frank Beamer Nick Saban they share their appreciation of the sport. Coach Beamer has been to many races. He's been in the pace car. Nick Saban has also been to Talladega. Uh, A.J. McCarron drove the pace car at Talladega. And some of the guys, I know they wanted to come out here and come to the game, but because of practice schedules, we're not able to make it. But you know that they are watching over there at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Shannon's done a great job. She's usually used to talking when <laughs> in the background. Intended for Ramari Cooper is the pass by A.J. McCarron. It's a, bit, a little frustrating for Amari Cooper tonight. Had a few drops, and to be honest with you, you have a pest in a good way, like Kyle Fuller all over you. you know, they have this work to do on the practice field. And we talked about the Virginia, Virginia Tech wide receivers. The wide receivers from Alabama haven't exactly created a lot of separation themselves no this evening, and that's that's a vulnerability. Play against a good secondary, but there has been a lot of talk in this preseason that this Alabama. Receiving group might be the deepest and most talented they've ever had. The hard on the draw. He got stood up by Kyle Fuller, who's been tremendous tonight for the Hokies. This defense has still just given up 166 yards of offense to Alabama. A lot of talk about the targeting rule. Well, this is how not to target. Head up, wrap up, and stay off the opponent's head. You'll never get a penalty called against you. And that's just excellent form tackling. And again, Kyle Fuller showing his toughness at the corner position. He's been outstanding tonight. That's my new favorite player on defense, at least for this week. Cody Mandel the punt. Wow. There was a shot out of a cannon. Aishan Jarrett. Got a good block. No flags down. And he's wrestled down by the putter, Mandel. And on the far sideline, I think the Hokies thought there should have been a face mask tacked on to the end of that as well. I guess they look like he kicked his coverage, but there were Alabama players down there in coverage. They just couldn't get Jarrett. Yeah, rule one, you never want to give up contain. And this is that little move right there. Gets the contain or the outside defender sucked in, allowing the sidelines open for Jarrett. Mandel with the punter throwing a little nasty on him. Even the punters are good tacklers at Alabama. 61 yard punt, 43 yard return. Excellent field position for the Hokies, down by 25 with under 10 minutes to go. Pistol now for Thomas. Blitz off the corner. And Edmonds ahead. He's getting plenty of work in his first college game. His 20th carry of the night for 132 yards and that long touchdown. You know what I wouldn't mind seeing from Virginia Tech? Maybe to go a little bit of tempo or hurry up. Mm -hmm. Again, just to get work and reps in against a fine defense. And if you're holding on any hope at all of right, exactly. winning the game, you gotta go. still time would be borderline miraculous, but stranger things have happened. 
under center for one of the few times. Thomas steps into the throw. And it's dropped by Knowles. Wow. I mean, Thomas is going to have one of the worst statistical nights you could ever see at this level for a quarterback. Five for 26. But when you watch this receiving core, it's not all that surprising. And as you said, it's not that he's been outstanding, but he's certainly been a lot better than those numbers would suggest. I think he's I think he's doing a pretty darn good job because he's thrown a lot of catchable balls. And frankly, his teammates have let him down. Third down and nine. Four man rush and they get there. Thomas so strong managed to stay on his feet for a while. He battled all the way to the end of that play. Xavier Dixon primary man involved in the first sack of the night for Alabama. Yeah, you see big Xavier Dixon doing a flip over Logan Thomas and testimony to the strength the lower body of Logan Thomas doing his best Ben Roethlisberger impersonation. He's going to be OK. I think Logan Thomas is loaded with potential. He just has to live to it and I think he's getting closer to living that to potential that led to his projection of the number one draft pick last year before the start of last year. The 12th putt of the night for A.J. Hughes. Down by Tyler at the 10. Here's Reese. Sean on ESPNU, Washington State and Auburn are going back and forth. This is Corey Grant of Auburn. I'm sure that name is familiar to Alabama people because he is the Alabama transfer to Auburn. Corey Grant scoring the touchdown. Tigers on top, 22-21. Aries, thank you. New quarterback now for Alabama. Blake Sims, a bit of competition in the preseason to see who would be the backup. Sims won it. Limited playing time behind McCarron last year. More of a running threat than McCarron. There's Ten Penny. Alti Ten Penny, true freshman from North Little Rock, Arkansas, run out by fellow true freshman Kendall Fuller. At the 30, 20 yard gain. And Chris, not a big night statistically for A.J. McCarron, who's been billed as a Heisman Trophy candidate, and understandably so, with his resume entering the season just 10 for 23 for a touchdown and an interception, 110 yards. Really, one bad pass by A.J. was the interception by Kyle Fuller. But other than that, I, I think A.J. was. Suffered from a little bit of the drops by his wide mm -hmm. receivers. A little more pressure than he's accustomed to behind this remade offensive line, losing three stalwarts. Off that team that won the championship last year. Ten penny taken down by Derek Donardo, about a yard and a half short of another first down. Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues tonight at 9 o'clock on ESPN. SEC Big 12 matchup number 12, LSU, takes on 20th ranked TCU. Presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN 9 o'clock tonight, also live on Watch ESPN. So we're just about a half away, a half hour away from the start of that game. We're told the kickoff will be at 9-11. We want to take a nap for a half hour or so. <laughs> Get up at 9-10. Jack Tyler, another tackle. He's on 10 penny. He's a good player, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Really impressed, Sean, with the performance of the Hokie defense. And frankly, I don't know why I'm surprised. They're well coached under Bud Foster, nine returning starters, and they play with great effort. Third down and one. The Hart slices across the left side of the line to the 44 for another first down. Well, we mentioned eight straight seasons, Chris. Of ten wins or more for Virginia Tech. Streak that ended last year. They went seven and six. They were the only team in the country that won at least ten games over that eight-year stretch. If they have another so-so year, you start to fight the perception battle. All the programs slipping, and then they'll be talking about 
Frank Beamer's in his late 60s, and maybe it's time to consider a change. Well, I think Frank Beamer's earned the right to be there as long as he wants to be yeah. there. Sims runs out of bounds. Well, he is most certainly going to be in the Hall of Fame. Both of these coaches are locks, and there's no way that you could keep either one of these two coaches out of the Hall of Fame, which is moving here to Atlanta. Will open in the fall of 2014. Prior to Frank Beamer, they won 53% of their games under Frank, more than 67. 10 wins in 13 of the last 17 years. If you think about after six years, Chris, he was 24, 40, and one in his sixth year they went two eight and one a lot of people calling for his head and a lot of people a lot of us never would have heard of Frank Beamer Dave Brain was the athletic director he believed in him he gave him another chance he went nine and two the next year and started 20 straight winning seasons in Blacksburg one of the great coaches of his time the winningest coach in the country right now with 258 wins you know, if you look at it and from analyzing this football team, and we've said it all night, they need to upgrade their recruiting as far as skill positions. They're not very talented at the skill positions. Obviously, their offensive line has held up well tonight. The true freshman, McLaughlin, has played excellent for a true freshman. The defense is the typical Virginia Tech defense. Where they lacking is the skill positions on offense. And they've lost some people due to injury. And for disciplinary reasons at the skill position, Sims yanked down by Dion Clark. Luther Matty is still in there at defensive tackle. And Alabama, after crossing midfield, will punt with under five minutes to go. Virginia Tech has dressed 29 freshmen tonight. They're true freshmen, a redshirt freshman. Very high number. And Frank Beamer does believe there is a lot of talent in that freshman class. Certainly seen it tonight from Kendall Fuller. Mandel punting for the ninth time. Still only 17 first downs combined. Fair catch made by Tyshawn Jarrett. At the nine yard line. Back at the Chick-fil-A kickoff game, and we remind you there's plenty more great college football action on ESPN, including Monday night from Heinz Field. A big part of Dick Sporting this kickoff week is Florida State and Pittsburgh as the Panthers make their ACC debut against the 11th-ranked Seminoles. Monday night at 8 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. New quarterback is in, Mark Leal. In for Logan Thomas and a flag before they can snap it. Illegal substitution. Defense 12 men in position. Five yard penalty. Still first down. You know, they're good enough with 11. You don't have to <laughs> cheat like that. You know, you think about it, Sean, besides that 178 yard run. This defense has been very, very good and as good as advertised mm -hmm. coming into this game, yeah. especially in the back end. I'm really impressed with the corner position, which Nick had a little bit of question about, and mm -hmm. see how the guys would respond. And I would say they they passed the test with flying colors tonight. The offensive line and defensive backfield seem to be the two biggest questions. There's Leal Jr. Green Acres, Florida. Chris Mangus carries. Here's the busiest man this weekend in college football. Reese Davis back in the studio. Reese is a labor of love, Sean. George and Clemson on ABC. Taj Boyd, he just put the Tigers up 7-0. First play after that from scrimmage for the dogs. There goes Gurley. Todd Gurley, 75 yards. He houses it. 7-7, dogs and Tigers. Still fairly early in the first on ABC. Thank you, Reese. Reese did the play-by-play -play of the big game Thursday night, South Carolina. Obviously in the studio tonight. Very astute observation on my part. And he'll be uh, doing the play-by-play -play for the game we just mentioned, Florida State and Pittsburgh Monday night. A man of great endurance. Yes. But he has to live up to that enormous paycheck. Here's a look at tonight's <laughs> good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Why wouldn't it be Christian Jones after a couple of 
special teams touchdowns, a punt return, a kickoff return for a touchdown. He caught a touchdown pass of 38 yards. From A.J. McCarron. Good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Seven touches, three of them taken to the end zone by Jones, the junior. Leal hands it off. Mangus got flattened by another true freshman. Jonathan Allen. Well, he mentioned Virginia Tech's schedule hereafter is favorable, and it really is true for Alabama as well. They have the much anticipated game in two weeks against AM as they try to avenge last season's only defeat. But then you look down, you don't see another number next to an opponent. Well, number 12, LSU. No Georgia in the regular season. No Florida, no South Carolina. Imagine they'll be a double-digit favorite in most of those games. Well, we're told probably every one of those, except the Texas A&M game coming up in two weeks. Nick Saban said he really wasn't thrilled to have that off week. Some might say you have the extra week to work out some of the problems that you saw here tonight and get ready for that one, but he'd rather just go ahead and play. Uh, what about Texas A&M? You had a chance to watch a little bit of them today. They'd like to think they're a national championship contender. Do you think so? Uh, well, I don't think so because I think they struggle a little bit on defense. Now, if they can improve defensively with Johnny Manziel in an explosive offense, anything can happen. But in order for them to get into that conversation, they have to improve on the defensive side of the ball. Well, most believe primary threat to the throne for Alabama is your alma mater, Ohio State. Looked good in spots today. Had a couple of bad moments and turnovers that were costly, particularly early in that game. They got one first place vote in the preseason AP poll. Georgia got the other of the two that did not go to Alabama, which got 58. By the way, five times there's been a team that got 50 or more first place votes in the AP preseason poll, and the team that got the 50 or more has not won the national championship once, so it's not necessarily. A good omen. Uh, to me, your alma mater has a lot to prove. I know they were undefeated last year, but sneaked by in a lot of games against lesser foes. And I'm not a believer yet. I think well, they have a shot. Yeah. Now. Well, I don't think Urban Meyer is a believer yet. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to still prove it, and they have to get better. And their defense struggled at times. And they're a team that usually gets better defensively. And, and we talk about Alabama, and, and there's some issues. I mean, he's going to look at this game like I look at it, and like a lot of people will, that it wasn't clean, it wasn't efficient. Defensively, they're fine, but they're a team, Sean, when he's leading the football team, they will get better each week. And I think, although he said he didn't want that week off between uh, the Texas A&M game, I think he's going to welcome the week end off, just so maybe they can get a little extra work in, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But if you're a Nick Saban coach team, the one thing you can count on if you're an Alabama fan, they will get better each week. Well, the other team that I like, Sean, is uh, Johnny Manziel in this game last year. The only blemish on Alabama's record last season, November 10th. Johnny Manziel led number 15 A&M to the upset 29-24. Ryan Swope. 10-yard touchdown at the time gave the Aggies a 14 and nothing lead. Obviously, that was a huge you know, resume good. booster for Manziel and his Heisman Trophy candidacy. Two teams I like is uh, Stanford and Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them are very talented. Stanford has an excellent front seven on defense. They're an old-school offense. Everybody knows how explosive Oregon's offense is. But the thing that is going to make them better is that I believe the Pac-12 is much improved from top to bottom. And so they'll get battle tested as the season goes on. And Georgia, if Georgia can hang on against mm -hmm. Clemson tonight, it's a big statement. By the way, the punt by A.J. Hughes a moment ago is his 13th of the night. That's one shy of the Virginia Tech single game record, a record he does not want to break. He has to punt again, he'll probably be right leg this time. His left, <laughs> left leg has to be just about worn out. Ten Penny will get the last touch of the night. And it's another season opening win for Alabama. 12th in a row for the Crimson Tide. They win 35 10, despite the fact they had just 207 yards of offense. They held Virginia Tech to 212, and 78 of those Hokie yards came on one play. 
Virginia Tech just seven first downs. The offensive struggles of a year ago carrying over against the best team in the country. Frank Beamer says the best team that they've played in his 27 years as head coach in Blacksburg, and they played a lot of good teams in that time. Here's Shannon Spade. Coach, I've heard you say that you feel people respond better when things go badly. If you look at the score, it looks like things went pretty well. How do you want your team to respond to this game? Well, I, I think everybody's got to sort of look at the good things and try to build on those things. But I also think we got to be realistic about the things we need to do better. And we obviously left a lot on the field that we didn't do very well, which we need to improve on. And that's going to be the way we approach our players and teach our players. We've got to be technical in how we can get better. What are some of those things specifically you feel like you need well, to get better at? It all starts in, the, in, you know, the offensive line up front. We didn't protect very well. We didn't get a hat on a hat in the running game. We got too good of players and too good of skill players on offense not to be able to be a little more explosive and a little more consistent. We had way too many negative plays. Special teams was good. Defense played pretty good except for one play. So, you know, we but every part of our team needs to get better. You know, this tells us where we are, so now we know what we have to do to try to get better. As you get ready for AM, what will be some of the things that you say to your players? Obviously, you just talked about what you need to work on, but what will you say to them to get them ready for that game? Well, I think the first thing, we have a bye week, so the first thing we need to do is focus on improving, all right? And, you know, we're really trying to be a team that can dominate a game for 60 minutes in the game by the way we play, the effort that we give, the toughness that we play with. And, you know, I don't, I don't think we really did that tonight. So uh, but we've got plenty of things to improve on. Uh, Texas A&M is a good team, obviously, and we're going to have to do a great job of getting ready for them. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. 20 straight wins against non-conference foes now for Nick Saban and Alabama. Final score of this Chick-fil-A kickoff game, the Tide 35, Virginia Tech 10. Coming up next on ESPN, Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week continues in just a few moments, the start of the game between LSU and TCU. So long from Atlanta, let's send you back to the studio.